I doubt it. <laughs> well, that'll be the day. That's the big thing about me these days. Um, that'll be the day. It's good to have you again, uh, Secretary of State John Kerry. John, you're a, uh, a welcome friend. It's good to welcome you back in Jerusalem. Uh, our discussion this morning focused on two uh, central issues. Uh, first and foremost, uh, we discussed the danger to the world posed by Iran's pursuit of uh, a nuclear weapons capability. Uh, we believe that uh, in a final deal, unlike the interim deal, it's uh, crucial to bring about uh, a final agreement about the termination of Iran's military nuclear capability. Um, I have uh, expressed my concern since Geneva that the sanctions would uh, begin to unravel, and I think steps must be taken uh, to prevent further erosions of sanctions. Now, on the Palestinian issue, I want to say that uh, Israel is ready for historic peace, and it's a peace based on two states for two peoples. It's a peace that Israel can and must be able to defend itself by itself uh, with our own forces against any foreseeable threat. Uh, I would also stress that Israel continues to honor all understandings reached uh, in prior negotiations. Now, if this, price is, if this process is going to continue, we're going to have to have a continual negotiation. Uh, we don't need artificial crises. Uh, I think we don't need finger pointing either. Uh, what we need uh, is not grandstanding, but understanding and agreements. And that requires hard and serious work. It actually requires that we do not uh, put before you, gentlemen and ladies of the press, everything that we're discussing, but to have these real discussions inside uh, in a sustained effort to bridge historic gaps and provide security. Uh, I'm fully committed, and Israel is fully committed to such an effort. And I hope the uh, Palestinians are committed to, to this goal as well. Uh, I want to thank you, John, for your uh, tireless efforts. I use that word carefully, tireless uh, and indefatigable. You uh, continue to pursue uh, this quest for peace. I appreciate it and I welcome it. And I also welcome the uh, opportunity to continue our discussions this evening and tomorrow and beyond. So welcome to Jerusalem again. Thank you, Rafael. Thank you. Well, Mr. Prime Minister, uh, my friend Bibi, uh, I am very, very happy to be back uh, in Israel. Uh, it's always a pleasure for me to visit, uh, and I have visited here so many times as a United States Senator and now as a Secretary of State. I've had the privilege of uh, getting to know uh, many people here, many parts of this great country. Uh, when I first came here, I think in 1986, I uh, spent a week and traveled every part of the country, climbed Masada, bathed in uh, the Dead Sea, uh, went to Galilee, the north, uh, visited uh, Kiryat Shimona, where kids were having to hide from rockets, Katusha rockets. Uh, uh, then indiscriminately attacking them from Lebanon, and I have seen the rockets in Sidorot uh, from people who were taking cover from Gaza. So I understand uh, the challenge of security that Israel faces. I understand it very well. And I uh, join with President Obama in expressing to the people of Israel our deep, deep commitment to the security of Israel, uh, and to the need to find a peace that recognizes uh, Israel uh, as a Jewish state, recognizes Israel as a uh, country that uh, can defend itself by itself. And that is an important principle with which the Prime Minister and the President and I are in agreement. Uh, much of our discussion in the very beginning uh, obviously focused on where we are with respect to Iran. Uh, I can't emphasize enough that Israel's security in this negotiation is at the top of our agenda. And the United States will do everything in our power to make certain that Iran's nuclear program, a program of weaponization possibilities, 
is terminated. We agree on what the goal of the final status agreement ought to be. And in the days and weeks ahead, uh, we will consult very closely and continually with our Israeli friends in order to bring about a comprehensive agreement that can withstand everybody's test. A peaceful program should not be that hard to prove. And everybody will know whether or not, in the end, uh, the comprehensive agreement actually provides a test adequate uh, to prove the peacefulness of that program. Uh, we will continue to keep uh, our friends in Israel and our friends in the region uh, fully advised uh, as we continue those negotiations. And for the moment, we are in the process of simply putting in place the implementation language itself. Uh, uh, with respect to the sanctions, we will obviously be vigilant. Uh, we say to any country uh, that contemplates moving ahead of sanctions, don't, because those sanctions will continue to be enforced. The fundamental sanctions regime of oil and banking remains absolutely in place. It is not changed. And we will be stepping up our efforts of enforcement through the Treasury Department and through the appropriate agencies of the United States. We obviously also spent uh, a, a very significant amount of time, and we will continue those discussions tonight uh, with respect to the direct negotiations between the Israelis and the Palestinians. We have always known that this is a difficult, complicated road, and we understand that. I believe we are making some progress, and the parties remain committed to this task. They are meeting regularly, and they have also remained, uh, we have remained in very close touch with both leaders as we proceed down this road. Once again, Israel's security is fundamental to these negotiations. And today, General John Allen, who is one of uh, the very best military minds in the United States, one of our most experienced military leaders, who has been spending months now uh, analyzing the security challenges with respect to this process. Uh, President Obama has designated him uh, to play a very special role in assessing the potential threats to Israel, to the region, and ensuring that the security arrangements that uh, we might contemplate in the context of this process will provide for greater security for Israel. This morning, General Allen and I provided Prime Minister Netanyahu and his uh, military leadership uh, with some thoughts about that particular security challenge. And this conversation will continue over dinner and possibly uh, into tomorrow morning. At some point in time, it depends a little on our talks here, I look forward uh, to visiting the uh, Palmahim Air Base uh, and doing so with Minister uh, Yoshi Alon. I don't know if we'll have time to do that tomorrow or not, but I do want to do that because I want to see firsthand the remarkable uh, ballistic missile defense technologies in place that our nation has spent over 20 years building with our friends here in Israel in order to protect Israel from the full range of missile threats uh, that it faces. And the advancement of these programs in recent years, I think, is a reflection of President Obama's and his administration's strong commitment, unwavering commitment, to Israel's security. Uh, it's appropriate that at some point uh, I get a chance to see how that is implemented uh, and how it is working. So I just close by saying uh, what perhaps doesn't need to be said, but I want to say it. The bond between the United States and Israel is unbreakable. And while occasionally we might have a difference of a tactical measure, we do not have a difference about the fundamental strategy that we both seek with respect to the security of Israel and the long-term peace uh, of this region. And we will continue to work for that. And I thank my many Israeli friends for their embrace and for their patience as we pursue this complicated process. Thank you, Prime Minister. Thank you, sir. Mark Walker. All right. Thank you.